Welcome to A Little TLC, the podcast where we embark on an enlightening journey through the ever-evolving world of education. I'm your host, Heather Volchko, and I'm on a mission to empower educators and change makers to skillfully navigate the intricacies of serving our most exceptional students. Every month, we'll be exploring a unique and timely theme in a mini-series format, whether we're digging into inclusive teaching practices, addressing student mental health challenges, or exploring the intricate connection between our personal and professional lives, each month offers an in-depth exploration of weekly topics that truly matter. I hope you're ready to be both challenged and inspired because this is a little TLC. All right, so we have been talking a whole lot about everything that we need to pour out for others. So what we're doing for them and how we're supporting other people, what compassionate care is. We also then talked about how sometimes it's not always easy and it's really positioned in the middle of a bunch of really sticky, messy either systems or social um, experiences. Um, there's just a lot of a tough stuff that comes with it. So it can feel kind of half-hearted or maybe overly optimistic to just say, so be compassionate, you know, like do all these things, be this kind of person. When in reality, like there's a lot of stuff that we're up against and working within. And it is a choice with a lot of effort behind it um, to be able to actually demonstrate that compassionate care in the midst of all of these other things that are also absolutely true. So this week we are focusing all about Uh, self-compassion and how can we extend that compassionate care to ourselves, what that can look like. Um, Yeah, just any any ideas and tips and tricks and things like that. Uh, So I'm going to lob that question to you first off, kind of already knowing where your answer is going. Um, So what do you think? What does that self-compassion look like? Um, Yeah, when I uh, figure that one out, I'll let you know. (laughs) Right. Uh, And that's... (laughs) I'll, I'll let you know it's it looks different um it looks different not just day to day or week to week it looks different minute by minute yeah exactly uh, as far as like giving yourself that that uh self-compassion um I can tell you what I do for um self-compassion um I just turned to a whopping uh, 39 years old uh, last week, uh, the other day. So um, I've learned a little bit about myself over time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I know some things that like are good for me. Uh, one being being creative. So yeah. like, um, that that's uh, where I do my pottery. That's where I do um, um, other like whatever I whatever space I could be in to either be creative myself or talk to creatives mm. or learn from creatives. Um, that's that's something that's very important to me. Uh, being out in nature is another thing that's very important to me. Um, I love I love going for hikes and walks and and stuff like that. I love um just I I always tell people that you know the 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 forest is where I go to find God and where I go to to for that spiritual connection. So that's that's another thing and people are are all right, so you know being creative, being in touch with nature and, and speciality and being in touch with people. Um, um, those are things that I need um, in order for me to recharge and and rejuvenate. But even as I say those three things, um, it changes from time to time. It changes from time to time. It ch- I, sometimes I'm better at it than others. Sometimes I know I need to take care of myself and I don't. Sometimes I know I need to not uh, slip into like these bad self-care patterns and I do. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) It changes from time to time. And like, if anyone says that they have any idea how to do it 100% correct, they're lying. (laughs) Well, that was part of what you and I were talking about before we started recording, right? It's just 
what's the 12 step plan to, you right. know, caring for yourself so you can care for others? Like it doesn't exist, right? It Every doesn't. person is different. Every season is different. The stresses and tensions that I'm under, that is why I need to care for myself is different, right? So like That's it's it's part. all over. Um, I mean, I'm even thinking, listening to you kind of talk through, like these are the things that I know for me, you know, uh, allow me to be positioned in a way that I can care for people that are walking through hard stuff. Even just listening to your list, I'm going, I got like one of those overlapping, right? But then for me, it's completely <laughs> different, right? So for me, it's it's silence, it's space. It's, you know, being able to get up early or walk around the house in in silence, right? There's just not a lot of commotion and a lot of noise, right? That, that allows me to just kind of like, you know, breathe and like pull it all back together. It's right, just space right, to right. dream, think, innovate, wonder, like play the what ifs in my head of all of like, wouldn't it be cool if, right, to just dream and have that space? Because I know when I'm really stressed, it's not dreaming. It's not being, you know, imaginative or thinking about those positive potentials. It's literally the grind of just like what's in front of me, get it done, right? And if I'm not kind of taking that opportunity to step back, then I just get stuck in the to-do list and I don't have that moment to just pause and breathe and dream um, and imagine. Um, and for me, that's that's a quiet thing, right? So I love people. Like I, my job is people, like everything is people. Our house is usually filled with people. Um, but like that's a different kind of feeling, right? So that for me is like where I just get to get to be, right? I'm not serving. I'm not actively like in, you know, kind of the, the work hat, if you will. And I can just enjoy like community and doing right, life right. with people. And that's incredibly filling, right? right, um, right. But I'm not necessarily filled by people like I'm personally filled by give me some space um give me right, some silence right. you know put me out in the middle of the woods for a week I am game um and just like <laughs> let me dream and imagine what you know what could be and then come back and I'll hit the road running like let's go right and most people know right. that too like around TLC if I've stepped away for a little bit they're like bracing for impact when I come back and they're like oh no what's the next idea what's the new thing what's the you know where are we headed next um but yeah, it's just, it's different people, right? Different people, but I think it's also different seasons. Things will show different up differently. Seasons, different times, yeah. I uh, What I tell uh, my kiddos that I work with, I like, think of it like a toolbox, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and you, you have these, these different coping skills or these different self-care skills that one uh, sometimes you don't need a, uh, a Phillips screwdriver. Sometimes you need a flathead screwdriver. <laughs> or sometimes you need, you know, a wrench or whatever, or or whatever. You gotta have these different tools and these different things or whatever. And sometimes, like you ain't got it in the toolbox, and <laughs> you gotta figure out a new tool to put in the toolbox or whatever, because um, it changes over time, like. I again, I, I, I the self help books make me vomit. I, I, oh, you just do these twelve steps and you will have a I get the heck out of here. <laughs> and again, I'm trying not to curse, but like, give me a break. Like, come on, that's not reality. That's not life. But I mean, I think. We're talking seasons too, but some of it is just situation, right? Like right. sometimes it's not feasible. Like I can't do shopping sprees and spa trips. And I think that's where I struggle with sort of the self-care movement is to like just disband it's everything. Right now. Like I, I want to <laughs> go walking right now. Guess what? I won't enjoy that. I would not get the same gratification I get normally out of walking if it's like freaking cold outside. And like I'm bundled up. I'm not, I'm mm -hmm. sorry, I'm not gonna get the same gratification. So it's like, okay, this is literally a season where walking isn't gonna be a part of the equation. Right. Well, I mean, like for me, like I'm in a school building and I get pulled into a crisis situation and I'm walking down the hall receiving information from someone about what's going on and what we're about to walk into. And especially if it's not a building I'm familiar with, they're also briefing me on their protocols and what they do and don't do. And I'm like catching up to speed while I'm walking. Right. So like in that moment for me, like those are huge self-compassion moments. Like I need to be centered and I need to be seeing what's what I'm walking into as honestly and accurately as possible. Um, and so like that situation, that is not a Saturday morning in the quiet of my house, right? Like, right, right, that, right. but I still need an aspect of that self-compassion to keep me grounded, to keep me present um, and to keep me in a, in a place 
where my own human self can show up and truly genuinely support whatever human has whatever need is going on at that moment too. Absolutely, absolutely. You have to be versatile within your self-care and your self-compassion, like whatever, just for those different situations, you know, different seasons, whatever. Like you have to be. Like if I'm in a scenario like you or whatever, and it's stressful, uh, I can't tell you how many times like I'm in a session with a client and it's stressful and I allow for my brain to like daydream a little bit in the middle of the session and think mm-hmm. about happier things like I have to do that because if I don't I'm gonna lose it and yeah. no one wants me to lose it especially myself so like give me that you know five ten seconds to think about that, that daydreaming scenario um and that's just like uh in the moment situation or whatever but and like, you're not leaving like, the person like you're no. not like spacing out you're literally just grounding yourself so that you don't get on the emotional ride with them right. because then you can support them through it as opposed to just getting into the middle of it with them Right, right, right. And you have to do that. You, and, you, and a lot of that comes from like, again, I'm, you know, I'm of the older age or whatever. Uh, but a lot of that comes from like growing and knowing who you are and knowing yourself and knowing what you're about and stuff like that. And it takes time. I think it does take time. I think it takes time. And I think it also kind of takes some trial and error. Right. Like making that choice to see, does this work for me? Does this not work for me? Or having those reflective moments to realize I have not even tried anything. So no wonder I am stretched so thin or feeling these kinds of ways. Right. Like right. They, it's sort of a trial and error thing, even if part of the trial is not trying anything um, and then finding kind of the errors in that. But then, OK, go back into it. And what are those things that could work for me? All right, I'm going to try this, try that. Right. Like, you know, going to the gym certain times a week or going to certain kind of class at the gym or those kinds of things, like whatever it is. Um, give it a shot. Does it actually have the result that I need it to have in my life so that I can continue to show up and be present and be compassionate and meet all the needs of people that are coming at me in such a way that I am not, you know, pouring from an empty cup, if you will. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I I love how you, you you talk about uh, just the different things and spaces and ways that, that, you you have to take care of yourself where how long I, i'm not gonna say where i when did you start discovering some of these things and, mm. the, reason I, and the reason i ask you that is because so i've always known i was a creative and i i i like to create things yeah. but like you would have never um heard me say it that I like art or I'm an artist mm. before pottery, before I discovered pottery. Yeah. Um, and it's funny because people who, admit, and maybe you are, maybe you know me, uh, you've known me for a long time. Maybe you were like, of course you, you just need to find your, your artistic expression or whatever. <laughs> uh, but like, I would have never known that, but like, so where did you, I don't know, like, learn some of this stuff? About uh, I think, I mean, before we even hit record, we were both kind of like, I don't know that we're the people to talk about this. Like, we, we may not, you know, we don't have those great examples. Um, and, and I think for me, it has been trial and error. Uh, some of it has been very, very practical, right? I was... Uh, a teacher and was working in a position where a couple of my students, uh, it was actually written into their plan um, because they had some self-injury stuff going on that uh, there was an active level of restraint that needed to be part of their programming um, to make sure that they weren't truly like causing themselves bodily harm. Um, But that meant that I needed to be stronger than my middle school boys. (laughs) Um, And so I was like, hey, I'm going to go to the gym. Right. And then I realized that by stepping away from my desk, going to the gym, grabbing some dinner and then coming back and, you know, I still 
whole crazy hours and, you know, live the teacher life. Um, but by putting that pause in between, like getting my guys out the door, getting the after school meetings wrapped up and all those things, then going, hitting the gym, grabbing some food and coming back. Um, my health was better. I was more uh, focused. I was able to do more work even um, and work faster um, after I came back. And so then I was actually working less um, because when I was working, I was so much more like present. Um, and then I was able, you know, to be able to see, you know, my guys are getting bigger and stronger um, in that developmental part of life. And can I actually serve them in the way that they needed to be served in those moments? Um, and can I walk that through with them? Like that was just a very physical, practical, tangible thing. But I then started seeing kind of all these other, like other, uh, I don't know, like side effects, I guess you will, um, of of working out or of, you know, choosing to step away for a minute to, you know, work out, eat, and then come right back at it, that I was actually working faster or I was, you know, more focused, those kinds of things. Um, so to me, I started going to the gym because I was like, I need to make sure that if I have to be put into these situations that I myself can stay safe and I can keep the safety of those that I'm working with, um, my yeah. student included. Um, so like if something went wrong in a hold, if that was because I muscularly could not you know, handle what needed to be done at the moment. That's why I started working out. But then noticed, oh my gosh, like there's so many other things that come from that. And so for me now, I'm like, okay, when are we up? When are we out? When are we walking? What are we doing? Like, I'm constantly trying to integrate that into programming with different districts that we're working with. Um, it's more than just like, let's go on a walk, right? But like, how can we be active in what we're doing? You know, I'm not as, you know, strong a proponent as maybe some of the like health ed folks out there. Um, but it's, been a big part of it, I think also partly because like I've worked in corrections and physical freedom is not necessarily part of the game. Um, and then working with students with the emotional and behavioral challenges, people get fearful. Um, like if they're in their seat, they're contained and then I can feel safe because they appear to be contained. Once they start getting up and moving around, then I get fearful, right? And then I'm not grounded and now I've got these things. So like to me, it started from just a very practical need of like, I need to be able to serve my student in this way. Um, and then I started noticing, wow, like there's actually a lot of things that come from that. And what could that look like? Um, and then that's just, you know, different seasons and different things and exploring different, you know, potential ways that it could, um, you know, impact more than just like that immediate need, but it's actually permeating in a lot of different ways. Um, but so I think for me, it's also reflection. Um, I think I've always been a reflective person. And so I'm always noticing, like, I haven't been trying anything lately. Like, that's on me. You know, I need to figure out a way to start getting some time back in my schedule to start, you know, choosing to uh, try some things um, or noticing, hey, I tried something. And wow, there were a lot of other outcomes to that that I did not anticipate. Um, and then just fitting that in, right? Like, how does that make sense in my current moment in life? Or how does that make sense to other people around me? Um, and just kind of seeing where that goes. Are you ready to choose a transformative learning journey that allows you to absorb, reflect, and apply new knowledge at your own pace? This week is Workshop Week at TLC. Join us for a collection of pre-recorded, immersive learning experiences designed to empower you with practical skills and moments of introspection. Our workshops tend to be the perfect blend of structured learning and personal growth. Each session includes dedicated time for reflection and application so you can truly internalize what you've learned. But that's not all. By becoming a member of the TLC Network, you gain access to professionals committed to walking this experience together. Learners get access to valuable webinars, enriching workshops, and engaging guest hangouts. Supporters gain access to our vibrant online community, monthly Q&A sessions, and join discussions in a little PLC. Clever, right? Either way, you'll be among the first to access our podcast and blog pairing every week. Don't miss this unique opportunity to engage in some self-discovery and personal growth. Join us and see the positive impact this week's workshop can have on your life. That was kind of similar to how I discovered pottery. <laughs> yeah, really? I, I, it, the, the joke I always say, but there is some truth to it. Like my wife kept on telling me that, you know, cause I just started doing it in the middle of the pandemic, like in the middle okay. of, so like 2021, 2022, um, 2022 and 2023 is when it really took off. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and I always joke around, and there's a lot of truth to it. My wife kept telling me, hey, it's a pandemic. You can't, you know, de-stress by going to talk to strangers at bars anymore. You got to come up with something else to do. So it's like, uh, I knew she was right, but it was like, I like talking to strangers at bars. That's another, uh, you know, coping skill and, and mm-hmm. self-care thing. So I was like, oh, you're right. It's a pandemic. And little by little, I discovered pottery. And it's like, the more I discovered it, it was like, it was another, it it awakened something in me. It woke mm-hmm. me up in, in a way that I had not been awoken in a long time. Mm-hmm. And I, I saw all the other benefits. I saw the benefits with work. I saw all the benefits with with uh, testing and, and just so many other benefits to um me doing pottery, me de-stressing doing pottery, like just having a sensory of touching clay and touching mm-hmm. dirt. Um, there'll be times I'm on the wheel, like and I don't make absolutely nothing. I just <laughs> want to touch the dirt. Yeah. Well, and I think you've done a really great job with, I mean, part of, I think, self-compassion, self-care that we've talked about at TLC is boundaries. Um, and that's that's coming up for me because I know there have been times where I'm like, hey, do you got a minute? Can I bug you on something? And you're like, hey, I'm at the studio. Can I call you after? Or I'm going to step out, but you've got five minutes, right? Like, this is my thing. Don't mess with my thing. Like, this is my space, my time, <laughs> right? And I need this, right? And I've I've appreciated how you've, jo- you've drawn that boundary, right? Before, after, a couple minutes during, but I'm cutting you off, we're done, right? Like, that you hold that boundary. But I think boundaries are also self-compassion in a, in a certain kind of way, too. It's self-compassion and showing respect for yourself and showing respect for others as well. I, 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 I think that when you, I mean, that's one of the things we talk about in social work or whatever. It's like you, you, you can't blur that line too much. You, you have to, you have to set those boundaries. You have to be strict about those boundaries. And like, it may seem like, oh, you're being an a-hole right now or whatever, but like, at the end of the day, it's going to benefit you. It's going to benefit the other person. Like everyone's going to benefit from those boundaries. Yeah. And I mean, I think in, in the roles that we have and the people that we serve and the communities that we're integrated with, um, I think by choosing to have some of those boundaries in our own ways, we're kind of mitigating our own burnout so that we get to continue Absolutely. to show up. Uh, absolutely absolutely like you like like you said when i go to the studio like i'm i'm there i'm in the moment i'm present like nothing else is going on mm-hmm. and that's going to help me be a better therapist in the morning that's going to help me be a better husband and you know that's going to help me be a better son a better friend a better like whatever like Give me those moments. Give me that time. Like, boom, this is this is it. This is all that matters right here, right now. <laughs> and like being, you know, uh, you, you know, you're in Chicago and, and there's a famous line from uh, a famous song from Common, um, Common Sense on his album B. Like, just be. Sometimes you mm. just got to be in the moment. Just be. Yeah, but I mean, how how true is that in any given moment, right? I find it's really easy for me to just be when I'm sitting in the middle of the woods and can just take in nature, right? I think that's something you and I have a whole lot in common. Um, but I think there's also a sense of like, I've been in crisis situations, like legitimate crisis, and there is an aspect of just be, right? Like right here, right now just be. And so how do I do that? I mean, that's where I tap in, kind of like you're talking about the toolbox, right? Tap into different strategies at different times in different seasons um, and and kind of like with the goal of allowing me to just be um, right. so that I can serve not just now, but, you know, through hopefully a long career and with lots of people right. in the future, right. you know? Yeah, exactly. Right, right, right. And, and like, again, and as we go, and, 
I, we talked about this, like the list or whatever. I don't want people to think again, I'm giving you a list of what you do. No. I'm saying like, this is what works for me. Exactly. At certain moments, at certain times. And if you haven't discovered what works for you at certain moments, at certain times, that means that your journey, um, your journey isn't over, isn't over yet. No one's journey is over yet. Like you're exactly. constantly learning. You're constantly evolving. You're constantly growing. Um, I, I I don't know. Like some people like cooking. Some people mm-hmm. like some people like eating. I I'm fat. I love eating. <laughs> you know. Sometimes that's a that's a tool. Um, different things for different peoples in different seasons works. And exactly. and there's eight billion people on this planet. So like. There's no book for what works for one person and that it's going to work for others. Yeah, but I think at the end of the day, it just comes down to that choice, right? Like, yeah. I need to choose to try some things, right? And it may work, it may not. It may work now and then it doesn't work next month, right? Or it worked in this situation for me and then it didn't work in a very similar situation later, right? So then, okay, what is it about it that worked for me initially? And then how can I you know, do something that then gets that kind of similar result, right? Um, But it's that choice, right? Like, I think people like us are natural givers. Um, Most of people that we are pulled in uh, to work with through TLC are are drawn um, to probably overextending themselves. And so it's a given, it's automatic to care for others and to extend that compassion and to do that work on behalf of and with other people. And it's really hard and can sometimes feel selfish to do that for ourselves or with ourselves or with community kind of on behalf of ourselves. Um, And so I think without a list, without some, you know, 12 step program on choosing to care for yourself, right? It's just how can you make that choice, right? If nothing else, Are you making the choice to at least try some things and see how that works or doesn't work, how it shows up in your own life? Yeah. And like I said, I, I, there there are times I'm better at doing it than others. Oh yeah. Um, There are times where I like, I like kick butt and doing it. And there are times where it's like, I know what to do. I know the right steps. (laughs) Uh, Another thing that's uh, a huge self care for me, I just, thought about it. I don't even know why I didn't include it in this. <laughs> it's therapy. I go to therapy. Like therapy is huge. Therapy of course. Is, therapy is um you know I, I don't know if uh if listeners remember the old hair club for men commercial. There was this old hair club for men commercial where the guy was like follow me. Okay. He's like <laughs> he's like I'm not only the hair club president but I'm also the client. Oh, I don't know if you remember that. Like, I, that's that's how I am with therapy. I'm not only the therapist; I'm also a client. Mm-hmm. You know, like therapy is huge for me, and like that's a huge, huge part of of my my self care. Because I need someone to help process my stuff with. I need someone to help, like, talk me off the ledge or whatever. Um, I mean, that's part of where friends and, and you know come from as well. But like a therapist, like I, if you if you never tried one, I, I'll get you one. Yeah, and like like you said, if you have supportive community around you and people that can really step into that with you and can help you in the ways that you need help, right? Like you're choosing to receive the help that then you're professionally turning around and offering right back out. Um, but especially if you don't have that community, you know, seeking someone who can choose to walk that with you, if that's through a formal, you know, therapy sessions, if it's through counseling, if it's through mentorship, if it's through whatever avenue, but someone who's actively choosing to invest in you, even if they're simply investing in you so that you can figure yourself out. Um, you know, I've got people who speak into my life in all kinds of different areas, um, and different people who call things out, um, within me and kind of in different seasons. Um, and that has been a total game changer, right? Like I wouldn't be where I am now if people weren't doing that with me and for me the whole way through, but I have to choose to be open to that. I have to maybe even choose to seek that, um, and then kind of see where that takes me. 
Absolutely, absolutely. You got to have those people around you. You got to have the people around you. You got to have people that like are invested in you and invested for you. And But what I mean by that is that they not so much trying to take advantage of you, not so much trying to eat off of you, mm-hmm. but they are invested for your growth, for your, your, your self-preservation, for the work that you're doing for others. Exactly. Yep. Well, thank you so much um, for having this conversation, even though neither one of us feel fully equipped or prepared to (laughs) speak as experts in this area. Um, Yeah. So thank you. And I'll catch you next week. All right. Hey, before you jump back into your busy life, we want to invite you to head over to thresholdlearning.org, your one-stop destination for all things TLC. Here you'll find our blog with this episode's show notes, our ever-expanding bookshelf of resources, and anything else we've talked about. Trust us, there's a ton of benefits waiting for you to explore. Just head over to thresholdlearning.org, click on network, and we'll see you on the inside. Sharing the podcast with your colleagues is the easiest way to support the show. You can find us at Threshold Learning TLC on Facebook and Instagram. A personal recommendation is by far the best way to share the podcast. Let them know they can listen on iTunes, Spotify, and anywhere else they catch their podcasts. Just be sure to leave a rating and review on your favorite platform. You can email us at info at thresholdlearning.org. We always enjoy connecting with fellow educators and champions for educational justice. You can find everything you're looking for at thresholdlearning.org. See you there.